atomic spectrum of hydrogen. Firstly, we will learn some key concepts like spectrum. Consider sunlight. We know that when we pass sunlight from a prism, different wavelengths bend at different angles. Or we get seven different colors. Remember that these different colors represent different radiations or different wavelengths. We call this group of radiations or wavelengths as spectrum. Therefore, we define spectrum as the group of radiations when light passes through the prism and splits into seven colors is called spectrum. Thus, remember that spectrum is a group of radiations. Now, we will learn types of spectrum. There are two types of spectrum, continuous spectrum and line spectrum. In case of continuous spectrum, consider this rainbow. Now, I always teach these three very important points about continuous spectrum. We can see that rainbow has no clear boundary line between colors. Secondly, the colors of rainbow partially overlap upon each other. Thirdly, the colors of rainbow is not separated by lines. Remember that such type of spectrum is called as continuous spectrum because all the colors are present in a continuous way. So whenever you listen continuous spectrum, always remind this rainbow. Now what about the line spectrum? Well, personally I call it discontinuous spectrum because it helps my student to remember this concept easily. Let's consider this fluorescent lamp. When we pass its light through the prism, we get only these colors. I mean, we only get four colors. I also teach three very important points about line spectrum. We can see clear boundary lines between colors. Secondly, these colors do not overlap upon each other. Thirdly, these colors are separated from one another. Remember that such type of spectrum is called line spectrum because in this spectrum, we only get lines. Personally, I call it discontinuous spectrum because this spectrum is discontinued in between. Hence, whenever you listen line spectrum, always remember this spectrum of fluorescent lamp. Now, there are two types of line spectrum like line absorption spectrum and line emission spectrum. It is very difficult topic for the students and I will teach this difficult topic in my personal way. Consider this atom. Let white light falls on this atom. It will absorb some radiations from the white light and will emit the remaining radiations. Now I pass this emitted radiation through the prism and I trace these radiations on the screen. We can see that some colors are missing in this spectrum. I mean, I only get four colors and three colors are missing in the spectrum of white light. Can you guess that why these three colors are missing? Well, this atom has absorbed three colors or three radiations from the seven colors. We call this line spectrum as absorption spectrum because this atom absorbs three colors. Let me repeat it. We call this line spectrum as absorption spectrum because this atom absorbs three colors. Hence, absorption spectrum is the one in which atom absorbs specific colors or specific wavelengths. On the other hand, this atom will cool down after some time. As a result, it emits all the three colors which it absorbed from the white light. I pass these radiation through the prism and trace them on the screen. We can see that we only get three lines or three colors. Or we say that we get three wavelengths on the black screen. We call this line spectrum as emission spectrum because this atom emits three colors. Let me repeat it. We call this line spectrum as emission spectrum because this atom emits three colors. Hence, emission spectrum is the one in which atom emits specific colors or specific wavelengths. Thus, note down all these important points. Now, I will give you a deep dive in order to learn 
this concept at advanced level. Firstly, we will learn atomic spectrum of hydrogen. Consider this atom at ground state. We provide some sort of energy to this atom. According to Bohar Baba, this electron in the first energy level will absorb this energy and it will jump to higher energy level. After some time, this electron will lose its energy in the form of radiation. Let me repeat it. After some time, this electron will lose its energy in the form of radiation. As a result, it will jump back to lower energy level. Now here is one very very important question. How much energy this electron loses when it jumps back? Well, this question is answered by Bohar Baba. He states that the energy emitted by the electron in the form of radiation is equal to the energy difference between the levels. Our del E is equal to E2 minus E1. To conclude this whole concept, we learn that when an electron jumps from high energy level to low energy level, electrons emit energy in the form of electromagnetic radiations. Hence, note it down this fundamental concept of spectroscopy. Now consider this numerical problem which will further clear your concept. An electron of hydrogen jumped from n is equal to 2 energy level to n is equal to 1 energy level. Find the energy emitted by the electron. Well, according to Bohar Baba, this energy del E is equal to E2 minus E1. We know that the energy of nth level is equal to minus 13.6 z squared upon n squared. Now I write del E is equal to minus 13.6 z squared upon n squared minus minus 13.6 z squared upon n squared. Or I write del E is equal to this minus and to this minus is equal to positive 13.6 z squared upon n squared minus 13.6 z squared upon n squared. Now I take 13.6 z squared as common. Del E is equal to 13.6 z squared and to 1 upon n1 squared minus 1 upon n2 squared. We know that the atomic number of hydrogen z is equal to 1. I write del E is equal to 13.6 into 1 squared into 1 upon 1 squared minus 1 upon 2 squared. After calculation, I get 10.2 electron volt. Hence, electron will lose 10.2 electron volt energy when it jumps from second energy level to first energy level. So, note it down this important numerical problem. Now here is the most important question of this lecture. How can we find the wavelength of emitted radiation? Well, to find it, consider this example. I take this atom. I provide some sort of heat to it. The electron absorb the given energy and jump from lower energy level to high energy level. After some time, this electron will lose energy in the form of radiations. My question is that, how can we find the wavelength of this radiation? Well, we know that energy of radiation is equal to hc upon lambda. Let this is equation number 1. Secondly, we know that the energy difference between shells is equal to e2 minus e1. Let this is equation number 2. Now comparing equation number 1 and equation number 2, we get hc upon lambda is equal to e2 minus e1. We know that the energy of nth shell is minus 13.6 z squared upon n squared. I write hc upon lambda is equal to minus 13.6 z squared upon n2 squared minus minus 13.6 z squared upon n1 squared. This minus and this minus becomes plus. I get hc is equal to 
13.6 z squared upon n1 squared minus 13.6 z squared upon n2 squared. I take this 13.6 z squared as common. I get 13.6 z squared n2 1 upon n1 squared minus 1 upon n2 squared. I bring this hc from the left hand side to the right hand side. I get 1 upon lambda is equal to 13.6 upon hc z squared n2 1 upon n1 squared minus 1 upon n2 squared. Here 13.6 upon hc is equal to r. We call this Redberg's constant. I get 1 upon lambda is equal to r z squared and to 1 upon n1 squared minus 1 upon n2 squared. Thus using this equation, we can easily find the value of any wavelength. Hence remember this important equation. Here remember this important point. n1 is the energy level where electron jumps to while n2 is the energy level where electron jumps from. Secondly, I use this trick to remember this equation. 1 upon lambda is equal to rate of zebra is 1 by 9 minus 1 by 9. It easily reminds me this whole equation. Hence note it down all these important points. Now we will learn the different series of atomic spectrum of hydrogen. The first one is Lyman series. Remember these two points about Lyman series. Firstly, an electron jumps to first energy level n is equal to 1 in Lyman series. Secondly, it is a series of wavelengths in the ultraviolet region. Now consider these energy levels. Let this electron jumps from second energy level to first energy level. We know that it will emit a specific wavelength lambda. Find its value. We already know the formula. 1 upon lambda is equal to rate of zebra is 1 by 9 minus 1 by 9. Now the atomic number of hydrogen Z is equal to 1. The electron jumps to N is equal to 1 from N is equal to 2 energy level. I write 1 upon lambda is equal to R N to 1 N to 1 upon 1 squared minus 1 upon 2 squared. I get 1 upon lambda is equal to r and to 3 by 4. r lambda is equal to 4 upon 3 r. We know that the value of 1 by r is equal to 911 angstrom. I write lambda is equal to 4 by 3 and to 911. After calculation, I get Lambda is equal to 1216 angstrom. Thus the wavelength is 1216 angstrom if electron jumps from n is equal to to n is equal to 1. Secondly, let this electron jumps from third energy level to first energy level. It will emit this wavelength. Find its value. Well, I write the equation. 1 upon lambda is equal to rate of zebra is 1 by 9 minus 1 by 9. We know that atomic number of hydrogen is 1. The electron jumps from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 1 energy level. 1 upon lambda is equal to r n to 1 n to 1 by 1 squared minus 1 by 3 squared. I get 1 by lambda is equal to r and to 8 by 9. Our lambda is equal to 9 by 8 r. We know that the value of 1 by r is equal to 911 angstrom. I write lambda is equal to 9 by 8 and to 911. I get lambda is equal to 1026 angstrom. Thus the wavelength of this radiation is 1026 angstrom. If an electron jumps from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 1. Similarly, if an electron jumps from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 1, it will emit radiation and its wavelength after calculation will be 972.8 angstrom. 
if an electron jumps from infinity to n is equal to 1, it will emit radiation and its wavelength after calculation will be 911 angstrom. Thus remember that if an electron jumps to first energy level, we will always get Lyman series. Here let me ask you, do you know the shortest wavelength and the longest wavelength of Lyman series? Well, we know that del E is inversely proportional to wavelength. If we increase the energy difference, the wavelength decreases. It means that if an electron jumps from infinity to n is equal to 1, we will get shortest wavelength. For example, we will get 911 angstrom. On the other hand, if an electron jumps from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 1, we will get longest wavelength of Lyman series. For example, we will get 1216 angstrom. Thus remember that for shortest wavelength, the energy transition would be maximum, while for longest wavelength, the energy transition would be minimum. Hence note it down all these important points. Now the second series of atomic spectrum of hydrogen is Balmer series. I write these two important points. Firstly, an electron will always jump to n is equal to 2 energy level in the Balmer series. Secondly, it is a series of wavelengths in the visible region. Now consider these energy levels. When an electron jumps from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2, it will emit this wavelength. When an electron jumps from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 2, it will emit this wavelength. Similarly, when an electron jumps from infinity to n is equal to 2, it will emit this wavelength. Now let me ask you, find the longest wavelength of Balmer series. Can you calculate it? Well, we know that for longest wavelength, the energy transition must be minimum. It is when an electron jumps from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2. We already know that 1 upon lambda is equal to rate of zebra is 1 by 9 minus 1 by 9. We know that the atomic number of hydrogen is 1. An electron jumps from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2. I write 1 upon lambda is equal to r into 1 and to 1 upon 2 squared minus 1 upon 3 squared. After calculation, I get 1 upon lambda is equal to r into 5 by 36 or lambda is equal to 36 by 5 r. The value of 1 by r is 911 angstrom. I write lambda is equal to 36 by 5 and to 911. I get lambda is equal to 6,659.2 angstrom. Hence the longest wavelength of Balmer series is 6,559.2 angstrom. Thus note down these important points. Now the third atomic spectrum of hydrogen is Paschen series. As usual, I write these two important points. Firstly, an electron jumps to n is equal to 3 in Paschen series. Secondly, it is a series of wavelengths in near infrared region. Now consider these energy levels. When an electron jumps from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 3, it will emit this wavelength. Secondly, when an electron jumps from n is equal to 5, it will emit this wavelength. Also, when an electron jumps from infinity, it will emit this wavelength. Here, let me ask you, find the shortest wavelength of Paschen series. Pause the video and try to solve it. Well, when an energy transition is maximum, the wavelength would be shortest. I mean, when an electron jumps from infinity to n is equal to 3, we will get the shortest wavelength. We already know that 1 upon lambda is equal to rate of zebra is 1 by 9 minus 1 by 9. Our 1 by lambda is equal to r into 1 and to 1 by 3 squared minus 1 by infinity. 
because the electron is jumping from the infinity. This term is cancelled out. I get lambda is equal to 8199 angstrom. Hence, the shortest wavelength of Pastian series is 8199 angstrom. Hence, note it down. The fifth series of atomic spectrum of hydrogen is bracket series. In this series, an electron jumps to n is equal to 4 energy level. It is a series of wavelengths in mid-infrared region. The sixth series of atomic spectrum of hydrogen is Fern series. In this series, an electron jumps to n is equal to 5. It is a series of wavelengths in far infrared region. Hence, note down all these important points. I hope that you have learned all about atomic spectrum of hydrogen.